Hello world, I'm a cop. Welcome back to Sunless Sea where we are at Barkus here at the southern edge of the map. So I'm thinking, is there anything over here? How much fuel do we have? We have 11 fuel. Is that gonna be... Well, that's probably gonna be enough to get back to London, but I'm thinking maybe we should just check this edge of the map as well while we're here. But first of all, let's just... Uh, let's see what Varkas is. The mirrored city where light was always the law. The walled city of Varkas is a tangle of green vines and luminescent fungal flowers slow-blooming around moldering stone. A quincux of carts that towers rise over the walls and pour burning white light into the bleak sky. A rough, shadowed path leads from the docks to the mirrored gates of Varkas. Two towering cart stone lamps throw their light on the angled mirrors, and a blue-cloaked guard stands in the reflected pool of light. The city is a beacon against the tree-hushed, sprawling darkness of the Elder Continent. In the far distance, a vast mountain glimmers. So we can choke on the smell, the sailors will be over, ask the guard a few questions, or a guard you wish to enter. Well, let's start by compiling our port report, of course. The Admiralty will want to know. The mirrored city and its glories. Tone down the details of the light and its brilliance. You don't want to inspire envy in the Admiralty staff. Okay, let's... Uh... Well, let's choke on the smell. Let's just start from the top. This overpowering sweet. It comes from the fungus growing wild all over the city's stones. The flowers have white, waxy leaves which leave powdery traces on your fingers. The light coming from the city has the same camphorous quality. And the smell. Perfume worn too many days on the body. Unread books left to turn to ink-stained pulp. A garden drowned and rotting in still water. Let the Zaylers wave us over. They are sitting on some upturned crates on the docks, playing a game with mirror chips and stylized snakes made of bone. You not think of going in there? The Zaylers gawk at you in unconcealed horror. They take turns telling you gruesome stories of Varkas, which they no doubt invented whole cloth. Some are convinced that the Varkati render Zaylers into tallow to light their city. Others say they steal shadows and sell them to their masters. All of them are convinced that they blind any strangers who dare to gaze too long upon their city's secrets. We're just waiting to be paid, and then we're off, one of the Zaylers says, nervously fingering mirror chips. I've only got one eye left, and I'd like to keep it. Okay, ask the guard a few questions. Sure. Never a bad idea to gather a little intelligence before heading into unknown waters, or cities, as the case may be. The blue cloak guard only acknowledges your existence when you step out of the darkness on the path and into the light from the lamps. The guard stands in the middle of the pool of light, looking warily at the darkness beyond you. Up close, the guard's blue cloak is threadbare and mossy along the hem. A pattern of embroidered suns runs along the collar, but the gold thread is dull. The coal around her eyes is smudged. Well, Thomas, she asks, are you going to ask your questions? Or are you just going to stare? Her tone is brusque, but her expression is curiously eager. You do not think Varkas receives many visitors. Ah, uh, uh, my name is not Thomas, you correct her politely. The guard looks scandalized and tries to stopper her ears. All oh, those who are not Varkasi are Thomas. You have been touched by darkness, and it has been taken your name. She fixes you with an admonishing look and adds, It is very ill-mannered to pretend you still have one. You begin to see, a little, why Varkas is not often visited. It looks like you will have to get used to being called Thomas if you wish to enter. Let's ask about light. It all seems a bit wasteful, possibly even ostentatious. We must always walk in Mihir's light so we burn our lamps night and day to banish darkness from the mirrored city, she tells you proudly. If we let darkness corrupt us, we would not be Varkasi any longer, but Thomas, like you. You wonder, is that so terrible a fate? Her mocking laugh answers you in her words to, Yes, it would be terrible indeed, Thomas, and before you ask, she adds, No, I don't have any desire to leave Varkas. The rest of Neath has fallen from Mira's glories, and I have no wish to join them. Okay, let's ask about her. Does she like her job? Does anyone? It's a great honor to guard the mirrored gates, she snaps defensively. She gestures to the edge of the pool of light illuminating her post. It's very dangerous. Even a small stumble and I could fall in the dark. Her voice goes thready. I would be banished from here, Grace. I would lose my name. That is why they only sent the bravest outside the walls. We will ask about the city's customs. Best to know before we flout them. Easier to plan an escape route that way. Don't touch the mirrors. Don't even look into the mirrors, she says, her voice out. And try very hard not to dream. We're expecting something on the lines of don't murder anyone or only wear red on special occasions. Still, you nod and smile. And uh, no more questions, okay. 
Mm, uh, let's tell the guy the wish enter. Well, what else are gates for if not to go through? She makes a mark in her ledger before ringing a brass bell. The mirrors of the gates you arrange to give you space to pass, but never once allow shadow to touch the god. Our ways are not yours, Thomas. Remember that, and walk in the light of me here. Okay, we have quality one. So, your eyes are blinded by the brilliance of the light. The verdant rot smell is even thicker. The heat of so much flame and reflected light presses oppressively against your skin. Your, heat, your head pounds. It's a few minutes before your eyes adjust and you can look around. Brass lamps and gilded sconces hang from every wall, and phosphorescent fungus grows moss-like upon doorways and ceilings. Cunningly arranged mirrors catch every droplet of light and diffuse it till each cobblestone and rampart of the city is drenched and blazing and utterly without shadow. Who do you speak to? So there's a firekeeper. We have a white cloth guard, we have the fungus guard, we have the jewel turban youth. And then we get uh, furniture that further than the other disc. So what is, what is this? Unlock the box, the nails of the tower no more than four. Okay, let's uh, anyway, let's talk to the fungus carter maybe. Her cart is piled high with fungal blooms and jars of algae painstakingly scraped from the surface of walls. She stops every few minutes to cough surreptitiously into her dyed cotton scarf and eyes you wearily than you approach. I had to take this load all the way to the sacred district, and the priests don't like it if I'm late. You inquire politely about her cough, and she looks suddenly terrified. Mihir, look down on me, she mumbles. Please don't say anything. I have family to feed. With that, she grabs the handles of the car and pulls away at a run. Within a few moments, you have lost sight of her in the crowded pathways. What an odd woman. So, hey, we gained a tale of terror. Oh, we have six tales of terror. That's nice. And got some more terror as well. Uh, we can speak to the firekeeper. Sure. Rest all in saffron, the pair of thick fireproof gloves dangle from a silver chain at her waist. It's, I'm too important to play guide to you, Thomas, she tells you before you even open your mouth. I'm the keeper of the Western Principal Mirror. She points up at the enormous multi-faced mirrors set atop each of the city's five towers. I'm only here because I'm looking for my idiot brother. He's probably busy pouring wine down some pretty dark eyed body's throat in a tavern. Boys? No, I, 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 I read that this body is first. It's a matter of great urgency, you wonder. He's late for his lamp checks in the sacred district, is her terse reply, as she hurries away. If the Akinodri found out, he'd be lucky to end up lake dredged. Okay, the tower lamp lighter quality is now one. The first tower bell has sounded. We gain a memory of a distant shore. Sure, well, let's talk to the jewel turban you as well then. He's in winking at you. That is a fertile wink or a flirtatious one. Only one way to find out. He looks utterly overjoyed to make your acquaintance. The bangles on his wrist flashing as he presses his hands together and greeting. My friends and I would be honored if you would attend a small gathering with us, Thomas. We are so eager to hear about the world outside Varkas City's walls. It seems an innocuous enough invitation, but then why does his gaze dart around so anxiously as he tells you how to find his mansion in the Eastern District? Okay, the first tower bell has sounded. Wait, can we already hear that? Okay, well, let's fur venture further on to the other districts. The mirrored city gleams invitingly. You'll get used to smelling time. You walk galleried courtyards wreathed with vines and fungal blooms. Long straight roadways crisscross the length and breadth of Varkas, the stone worn by the wheels of carts and the tread of thousands of slippered feet. Lamp ladders constantly check the fuel levels of the sconces and replace vicks. Firekeepers check the coil spring mechanism that control the angle of the mirrors. The smudge is floor. Where will you go next? So, entertainment, the hospital, the guardhouse, temple, I'm here, man, still in the... You know, let's, let's go to the mansion of the jewel turban youth. It is in the eastern district. Ooh, the pilgrimage to Amardari. Okay, you need Vartas the Agri, you know, there is interest in Vartas respect of the guard, in trust the power place, no approval. Okay. So, mansion of the Jewel German Youth. It is in the Eastern District. Well, he did invite you, after all. You aren't entirely sure what you were expecting from the Jewel German Youth's invitation. Perhaps a candlelit dinner and a genteel seduction. It turns out to be an evening of card games and chilled wine with his rather eclectic collection of friends. But as the wine is drunk and the cards are played, uh, the gathering takes on a certain political tone. A raggedly dressed artisan begins complaining of the Agni Hodri's trade restrictions. A novice priest points out contradictions in Mihir's mantras. A stone cowboy questions whether his daughter should also have to follow in the same profession. Will you? The jewel turbaned youth stares at you looking as will you tell us a story? So, could we tell them... You know, let's tell them of ourselves. It may be nice to be honest, but for the group of people you'll never have to meet again. You wet your throat with tart wine and fix your eyes in a carved lintel and begin your own, somewhat convoluted tale. At the end, they look slightly dissatisfied, slightly relieved. 
We were hoping that you would trap and youth clear his out. They would tell us <clears throat> he pitches his voice lower. Lies. You're a little insulted af after all, it's not if you make a habit of telling strangers of your past. I mean no insult, he asks placatingly. We only have true stories here in Marcus, and no inventions, no made up tales. Okay, we can't remember if this is solo, some terror, the second tower bill has sounded. Uh Okay, so we might tell well let's uh tell a one Let's let's do a forty one percent chance here and see what it gives. Oh we succeeded, nice. Your story sucks the light away from the room and tumbles into bleakness. Your voice rises and falls like the lap of waves against an iron hull. When you turn to yourself, the Varkasi are weeping into each other's arms. The novice priest presses his forehead to the ground and prays desperately for me here to forgive him. The jewel turbaned youth embraces you tightly, and you can feel the pounding of his heart against your own. Your story was like being touched by darkness, he whispers in fascinated revolver. It has made me apostate. I will I will no longer walk in Mihir's light. Whoa! Okay. You should suggest that perhaps it was just a Z story, but he only shakes his head and sobs harder. Well, we gained 10 terror, that's not good. Well, hey, we gained 7 secrets. And a tale of terror, that's nice. Uh, right. Uh, so, the Agni Hotra's interest, the respect of the god, the dour faced nurse's approval. Where are we? Okay, well, dour faced nurse probably in the hospital. The hospital lies in the shadow of the southern tower. Are you feeling a little fevered? Do you hope to learn medical secrets? Or perhaps you just enjoy the moans and flushed faces of the sick and suffering? The charitable hospital is a long, galleried building divided into series of curtained wards with their own light sources and mirror series. A dour-faced nurse glances at you expectantly. Which ward are you here to visit? Uh, you know what, let's offer the service of the brisk campaigner here. You won her trust, she's prepared to come ashore. The dour-faced nurse watches you carefully as you assist the campaigner in cleaning wounds and changing bandages. She gives you a satisfied nod. The gods are pleased to have a new attendant and call you Nurse Thomas with warm welcome mockery, which makes you feel part of their crew. They try the same thing with the campaigner, but only very briefly. You see the campaigner and the nurse exchange a glance of challenges and cordial respect. Good work, the dour-faced nurse says at the end of your shift, handing you each cup of steaming mushroom tea. It revives you greatly. Do you detect a hint of tree sap liquor at the bottom of the cup? And something else, something of the south. The poor sharpel has sounded. Uh, our... Okay, the dour-faced nurse, approval, yes. Lost from terror, gained memory distance and sword, gained heart, gained iron, gained mirrors. Okay, that's nice. Uh, apparently we were thrown out of here. Right. Welcome. The guard at the mirror gate smiles. Clearly she remembers you. Can we go inside? The blue clock guard waves you through. Walk in the light of me here. Right, let's continue our explorations. Okay, for some reason it threw us out. I don't really understand why. So... Uh, respect of the guard and Agni Hodder is in this. What are we gonna find? Well, the guard house will probably give us the respect of the guard. So, down a side street, you can see the sun blazing flag from here. Just follow the stream of white cloaks. A modest stone building with bas relief lintels and wide, unhuttered windows. The stylized son of Mihir flutters from a silk flag above the porous. It is a scene of controlled chaos. You can see the white cloak guards bustling to and fro within, shouting companionably to each other while a stream of fungus carters, merchants, and ordinary citizens petition them. A dream of smoke. What do we need? Menaces. A dream of smoke. Hint at the jewel turban youth activities. Train with the guards. You know, well. Okay, let's train with the guards. There's a formation of new recruits doing basic forms in the courtyard. The sergeant doesn't object when you slip into line, but he doesn't treat you with any particular gentleness either. You practice hand-to-hand -hand combat for a few hours and end up on your back more often than not. They fight in an unfamiliar, light-footed style. A few of the more advanced recruits duel with curving, twin-bladed scimitars. Interesting, the sergeant grunts at the end of your session. You are bruised and possibly concussed, but quite satisfied with your morning, and you think they may have learned something in turn. Hey, you gained two iron. Nice. The fifth terrible has sounded. It is evening. Uh, okay, we can't... These are locked, right, because it's too late. So, return to the city center. There is more of walkers to explore. Uh, the inn. At evening, after the fifth bell, each Thomas is assigned a room. The light is endless and merciless. Will you sleep? All visitors to Varkas are given one night's accommodation in the city's only inn. It is a handsome stone mansion arranged around a pleasantly cool courtyard. Frescoes of city life are painted on the walls. 
Given how few visitors walk as hosts, you suspect the inn is more usually used by philandering locals. Evening falls, or does it? The town's five principal mirrors are mounted on coiled spring mechanisms and alter their angles subtly to create the impression of evening. Across the city, the firekeepers throw pinches of colored powder in the lamps and quality of light yellows to a softer brightness. We're at here the wine maze lamp lighter. We have the kitchens, we have the courtyard. Uh, we have sleep. Okay, I don't maybe want to, I don't know if I want to sleep here, but let's uh, get the courtyard since there's a straightforward challenge. Cushions are arrayed around the marble foundation in the middle. Musicians pluck their instruments under the shade of the twisted yellow leaf trees. The songs are curiously prosaic. The lyrics more like a biographical report than a poetic invention. You listen to Lake Dredger's waterlogged lotus rooted dirge. You sway the slow, steady ballad of the fungus collectors and join in the lamplighter's quick footed dance, which mimics their evening rounds. The evening finishes with the song of Mihir, which is sung to the accompaniment of stringed instruments and drums and polished glass prisms, which split the white light into rainbows in counterpoint to the notes. So we gained three memories of this intro, lost two terror, gained five fragments. It is night, although there's no darkness in Vakas. Time to sleep. Uh, let's, tr let's try not to sleep. I feel like sleeping is going to be a bad thing. It's going to give us a <laughs> menaces. So let's not sleep. Okay, we failed in that. It, uh, you watch the light scintillate across the inn's walls. You pinch the delicate skin of the insides of your elbows and pace the length of the room. Did the mirror by your bedside just give you a roguish sort of glint? Are you going out of your Z-faring mind? You decide, very deliberately, not to look. So we gain Fragment, gain 2 Terra, and uh, time to go, until next time. Uh, this is the same text we already read, yeah. Dra dawn in Vox. Outsider time in Vox is strictly rationed. Each morning at dawn, the god visits the inn to eject any Thomas they find. They are polite, but very definite. So we gained 1 Terra, right? Return, the guard tells you. But not yet. With that, they usher you in the darkness beyond the walls. You blink mirror dazzle from your eyes. It's cold out here. Okay, Gant, go back. Uh, were there any shops here? No, there are not any shops here. So, let's uh, get our move on. I think we are gonna go... And yeah, we're gonna see if there's anything here to the... Which way is this? This is east. Right, this is... Yeah, this way is east. We'll go see if there's anything in the east here. Don't think there is, but... Oh, crap. 460 health bats. Doesn't sound like something we want to fight with. Just want to make sure if there is something here or not. Because we're, like, we're probably never, like, well, we're, we might return to Vakas, but it's very unlikely that we'll ever go more to the east here. Yeah, and this says, yeah, okay, so this says that we're at King's Eater's castle. So I'm assuming that that's kind of like, uh, so this is the King's Eater castle area, so there's probably nothing else here. Just, uh, gotta make sure. Uh, if our fuel goes below 10 before we actually see the edge, then we're just going to, uh, well, there's something that gave us 150 fragments, so... That's okay, uh, which kind of reminds me that we do have a lot of secrets right now, so let's uh, talk to maybe and uh, increase our veils. How many secrets do we have? 22. Okay, let's increase our veils by total of... where are we at? Yeah, 50. Yeah, let's make it up to 60, and then we can proposition maybe his daughter afterwards. I don't know why I want to proposition her, but it feels to me like if there is like a... Like, this is how I feel about games, usually. If there is a check, if there's something that you require to do something, then it's probably worth doing it, so... Let's proposition maybe his daughter. What a coincidence. I was about to suggest the same thing. She has no interest in tedious and sincere lovers, and she reveals at least 20 points higher than your hearts. This crystallized. The daughter disrobes you with efficiency and delighted enthusiasm. Bears a shapely shoulder, winks. Oh yes, she says. I have other tattoos. Let's see what we can find. Opportunities for other trees will occur while you're at sea, substantially reducing terror. However, if you have a lover in port, they might find out. We have begun an affair with Mabel's daughter. You have fraternized us with one of her officers, and we lost five terror. Okay, that's nice. Oh, there's uh, what's that? Uh, I completely lost 
what is this called? This thing. It's an eddy. Okay, this is the edge, so... Burning blue, a hiss of horror from the lookout. The gleam lamp at the front of the ship is sputtering and arcing, fizzing with blue light. Even as you watch, the blue fades, but it's not a good omen. Well, this is only a 93% chance, so yeah, let's uh, do this. The darkness underneath is more than the absence of light. It is a physical presence which distorts the shape of the world. Your light melts the darkness, restores sanity to the world. You explain something of this to your sailors. It's not the first time they've heard it, but they seem slightly less nervous. Gain fun fragment. Well, that's not a lot. By the way, what do veils even do? Speed, stealth, deception. Decreases the range in which enemies will spot you. Okay, that sounds pretty good, actually. Uh, the fact that it says speed would be really nice. A sailor has run mad. She roams the ship, cudgelly hands, smashing comrades to the deck. She cries, he's angry. Oh, he's angry. So we could use iron, uh, which we're probably going to have to do. It's the only safe thing to do. She's already killed one man. Oh, no. A bitter end. Your sailor's weapons roar, and down she goes. You recite a hasty funeral for the poor soul and her wretched victim. But who will be next? Lost two Gru. Oh, and we lost Storm's attention. Well, not sure if that's a good or bad thing. I don't like the fact that we lost something that we've done things for. Well, we talked to one of the do uh, women at the... At the... Uh, so are we, we're over 50 terror, apparently, I think, because we're getting these events. Restless nights. In the watches of the night, you pass softly past the hatch of the crew quarters. A man cries out softly in his sleep, desperately. Another... Inquire about their dreams the next morning. Yeah, sure, let's roll. Who gained one terror? It doesn't it's not that bad. Eyes and a face. The whole knees is up like a snuffer mask. There's something in the roof, Captain. It's the roof! It's watching us! Eyes and a face! Eyes and a face! You have him subdued. No discipline this time. But you require your first officer to keep an eye on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh so back to Arcus we go. I'm gonna hit the harbor here because the game saves when you go to harbor, so uh, just to be absolutely sure that what we've done on the other side gets saved. Uh, there were no shops here, no. Uh, let's see, could we... Oh, we could actually return here, but I don't think we want to do that right now. Let's just ke keep moving to the west. Yes, this side is west. Go ahead westwards. Uh, stick close by to the edge here. Let's see. Like I know there are other ports here. Suddenly I started thinking, do I? Are there? I feel like Port Carnelian, which is one of the places where Maybe's daughter wanted us to go look for Maybe. Was I pretty sure that it's in the south here? And well, if there aren't any other points here. At least we will know that there aren't any other points here. So can I keep standing at the Z bed just in case it finds something uh, Adam's way, some distance to the west. Okay, well there's at least something here. Uh, Point Livingston. Interesting. Adam's way over here. Something drifts face down. Right, uh, do we have a harbor here? Or is this just a way to go off the map's edge? Oh, there is a harbor, but what is this, this place then? Okay. Dark Brighton Straits. Let's turn off the... Holy crap, we're at five fuel! I didn't... Realize we were so low on fuel. Okay, this looks to be a way to go uh, off the map's edge, and I don't want to do that because usually going off the map's edge causes bad things to happen. Uh, we might do that later on when we're in a better situation, but I didn't realize we were so low on fuel. That's actually really bad. Sleep, sleep when you're dead. You're hurt. Am I? You're hurt. You should really be in bed. Spend time bed. This really is where you should be. You will heal a wound. Yeah, we have a lot of supplies. So if we, yeah, menace this wound. We had one wound. Now we don't have. Okay, that's good. Because wounds will end up killing you. 
if you have them. Well, at least that's what the game told me. I've never died in this game of wounds. Okay, come on. Just just be a place that sells uh, fuel, and this will be nice. Uh, oh no, we're down to poor fuel. Doc, you hear? Adam's Way. On a bed of monumental ruins, warehouse, and way stations of shroom timber rise. Ah, oh, there is a shop here. We can sell parable of linen, we can sell our mushroom wine. Ooh, hey, we can buy dark drop coffee beans from here. Let's buy dark drop coffee beans. Let's buy some fuel. Oh, fuel's pretty cheap here. Let's actually fill up on fuel. Uh, because with the coffee beans, we can talk to her again. Let's see the uh, Adam's Way first. Near Adam's Way. All ships that approach Adam's Way are intercepted by the gracious, the presbyterate, splendidly headdressed coast guards. A quaint but inviolable tradition governs entry. You must sell them one of three stories. You shouldn't be permitted to sp spend a single day in the port. Okay, let's, uh, uh, why are foreigners only allowed to spend a single day in Adam's Way? For your own protection, one of them explains kindly. Unsafe. The soil of the Elder Continent is dangerous to incomers, they claim. Those who linger can contract unfortunate conditions, hysteria, rapture, animescence. And the rumors that the Presbyterate law offers no protection to foreigners after dark aren't nonsense. Well, we have a tale of hell. The Presbyterate has never explained its interest in devils. They are keen to hear what you learned in Mount Palmerston. Unread law, recent news. Okay, let's sell a tale of hell soon for them. A new day. An exchange of glances, your ship is waved on toward the long stone jetty. The day has just begun. In the town square, a yellow-robed priestess plants a seed in the bed of black soil. No sooner has she patted down the soil than a tiny shoot pokes forth. By mid-morning, it will be a sapling. By lunchtime, a budding tree. By the evening's end, it will wither and fall. You must back your ship before then. Okay... Okay, there's a lot, of do lot to do here, apparently, as well, so... Uh, I think we're actually going to put a cut in here and we're going to do Adam's Way in the next episode. I'm a cook up. Uh, this has been Sunless Sea. Goodbye, world. Thanks for watching. See you next time.